Corey was the first woman in America to receive a Nobel Prize in Science. Born in Prague on August 15, 1896, Dr. Coy began her primary education at home before entering a lyceum for girls in 1906. Gertie Corey studied for the university entrance examination, which she took and passed at the Tetschen Real Gymnasium in 1914. At the age of 16, Gertie had decided that she wanted to become a medical doctor. Upon pursuing her studies, she realized that she lacked the prerequisites in Latin, physics, chemistry, and other mathematics. Over the next year, she managed to study the equivalents of eight years of Latin, five years of science, and five years of math. While studying for her medical doctorate, she met a fellow student named Carl Ferdinand Corey, whom she worked with and published the results of their first research collaboration in 1920. They both shared a love of mountain climbing, gardening, and skiing, along with the interest in laboratory research. She received her doctorate in medicine in 1920 at the German University of Prague. Gertie Teresa. She spent two years at the Carolinan Children's Hospital before emigrating to America with her husband, Carl, whom she married in 1920. Gertie and her husband, Carl, worked on many things over the degree together. They worked on carbohydrate metabolism, and they worked on isolating individual tissues and enzymes. When Gertie and Carl first got together, it was as if sparks were created. Even as they wrote their first joint paper together, it resulted from an immunological study of the complement of, here, of human serum. But not everyone felt that Gertie and her husband working together and making these new discoveries were for the best. Continuing her work at the University of Rochester, faculty would warn Corey that she was ruining her husband's career. While searching for a job at the University of Toronto and Cornell University, they both refused to hire her, but tried to persuade Carl to take up an appointment instead. Despite all of this, Gertie and Carl refused to stop working together. Because of this, the couple moved to St. Louis, Missouri, where Carl had been offered the chair of the pharmacology department at Washington University School of Medicine, and Gertie was offered a position as a research assistant. Gertie and her husband isolated the glucose 1 phosphate, which became known as the coriester, and traced the activity back to the phosphorylase. This discovery made possible the enzymatic synthesis of glycogen and starch in vitro, and carried out several studies on the pituitary active centers of biochemical research which they have directed. In 1929, they described what is known as the Cori cycle. This was the discovery of the course of the catalytic conversion of glycogen and later devoted their efforts to learn more about how energy is produced and transmitted to the human body. The Cori cycle was especially useful for diabetes and was also the first time the cycle of carbohydrates in the human body had been fully understood and explained. Gertie and Carl both received a Nobel Prize for their discovery. She was the first woman in America to receive a Nobel Prize in science.
Along with the Nobel Prize, she also received the Garvin Olin Medal for Women Chemists of the American Chemical Society. She was also a member of the National Academy of Sciences. Later in Gordy Curry's life, she found out she had myelofibrosis and died on October 26, 1957 in Missouri. Oh, ma'am, we have your test results regarding the symptoms you've been claiming to have these last few weeks. And unfortunately, we concluded that you have a blood disorder called myelofibrosis. Because we don't have much information on it, it's still pretty rare, but this is what we have so far on what it is. Um, if you don't want to read that, we know it's quite a lot to handle, but it's basically where your red blood cells within your bone marrow produce more than it should. So if, for example, you're already getting symptoms of it with bruising, that will progress as your symptoms and your disorder come to an end. Um, we don't have much treatments for you right now, but here's a list of what we have. and. I will suggest you coming in every week, once a week, until unfortunately it's your time to go because you don't have much longer. It could be anywhere from a year to 15 years. Um, so I suggest you really living your life right now. Right. Thank you. Okay. Good luck. Thanks. Due to her great impact in the science field, Gertie Corey has a crater on the moon and on Venus named after her, along with a National Historic Chemical Landmark and a star on the Walk of Fame in St. Louis. Although she influenced the science field greatly, she spent nearly three decades on her research which led to her not working on anything else, especially due to the last 10 years of her life being taken up by her myelofibrosis. claimed but it's my deepest condolences that consolence <laughs> we're into like no, go go Gertie and her husband Carl worked on many things that we did career together they worked on carbohydrate <laughs> go go again carbohydrate and what is it I don't remember metabolism metabolism Gertie, Gertie and her husband Carl worked on many things that we did career together they worked on carbohydrate metabolism <laughs> <laughs> Go. Gertie and her husband Carl worked on many things that we did create together. They worked on carbohydrate metabolism and then they worked on. My arm's getting tired. Can you. Go! Go! Gertie and her husband. Go! Gertie and her husband Carl worked on many things that we did create together. They worked on carbohydrate metabolism. And they worked on isolating individual tissues and enzymes.
Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So, Allie, what are you doing here? Oh my god! <laughs> I'm giving Tabitha some bruises. Because she's dead. <laughs> Tabitha, you gotta stop. <laughs>